Welcome back guys. Let's talk about a way to make cursor, bolt, windsurf, Klein, all of these things 10 times better. Now, a lot of these tools, if we just go on, for example, Klein, a lot of them have a space for you to put custom instructions, right? So if I press settings here, you'll see custom instructions right here on Klein. The same is true of cursor. So if I just go on cursor, press settings, you'll see that it actually says rules for AI. And again, this is custom instructions, right? So a really, really cool thing is this right here, which is cursor.directory. Now this is cool for two reasons. The first is because it makes these AI coding softwares even better. But the second thing that it does is it gives you ideas for things that you can create yourselves, okay? So a really cool example of that is game development, right? I've been interested in game development for years. The reason being, if you look at my laptop, I've got Lethal Company, I've got uh, the Had League of Legends, I think I might have deleted it because I needed space for other games. I've got WoW Classic right here. Um, I've got RuneLight to play RuneScape. I've got Counter-Strike 2 as well. I think I deleted that as well uh, for space. Uh, you know, I've got Steam. I've got all these different games because I'm a gamer. I love gaming. And I've always wanted to make a game. But things like Unity, things Unity, first of all, is way too expensive. And uh, Unreal Engine, in my mind anyway, I'm, I'm not, I've never actually tried too much. But you, the, the problem with these things is you have to put all the threads together yourselves. And as far as programmatically generating a game, from what I can see, it's not really that possible. But it looks like you can see here, you are an expert in C Sharp and Unity and scalable game development. So it looks like you might be able to use Cursor or whatever to make a game on Unity, which is really, really cool. But a really cool one here for me personally is this one here. You are an expert in TypeScript, Pixie.js, web game development and mobile app optimization. You excel at creating high performance games that run smoothly both on web browsers and mobile devices. So if, let, let's just test this out, okay? But there are many, many more here. So let's say you wanna make something in Next.js. You can scroll through these. You are a senior front end developer and an expert in React.js, Next.js, JavaScript, TypeScript, HTML, CSS, and modern UI, UX, UX frame, frameworks, Tailwind, Shad, CN, Radix. You are, thoughtful, you are thoughtful, give nuanced answers, and are brilliant at reasoning. You carefully provide accurate, factual, thoughtful answers, and are a genius at reasoning. I, sometimes these prompts seem really, really stupid, but they do seem to work pretty well. So what this does is it gives more of a framework for your specific tech stack, right? And you might not be able to find your tech stack always, but I just find this really, really cool and really, really interesting. So next time you wanna make a directory website in Next.js, maybe the play is to first of all, grab one of these things and put it in the custom instructions. Instead of just going through that and you know trying to spin this into a 30 minute video for no reason, let's actually try and develop a, a game right here, right now. Okay, so I'm gonna press copy here. I'm gonna use Bolt. Now, I'm gonna explain a little bit about when I would use Bolt, Cursor, Windsurf, which is probably a video in itself. I use Bolt when I don't understand the tech stack, when I don't know what tech stack to use, okay? Because what Bolt does is it makes all of the decisions for you. It takes the guesswork out of the process and it builds everything as you would expect it to be built. It puts the foundations down for you and from that, you can learn how the foundations of something are built, okay? Cursor I use when I'm trying to develop an MVP. Windsurf, I don't use, I don't see the hype, to be honest with you, I don't think it's as good as Cursor personally, but I think these are all kind of, you know, whatever you prefer. Klein, I use when I'm trying to go from zero to um, production ready code in the shortest amount of time possible, okay? So let's just put this in. I want to say I want to make a randomly generated cave shooting game with loot from monsters and chests, which uh, allow me to upgrade to better gear. I want everything to be generated um, without any external assets. The reason being is I don't want to go and find a load of PNGs, okay? So I just want to um, have something where it shapes and things like that instead of me having to go and find PNGs of cave monsters. Okay, so you can see here, this is making a pretty good start. Now, it would be cool to understand what it's actually doing, which is the important thing. 
I have no idea what it's doing though. <laughs> so <laughs> there is that. So we've got simple noise. Uh, okay. Okay. Count alive neighbors. Okay. Bad. Okay. Yeah. To do. Okay. 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 That's fine. So it's using Vite React TypeScript starter. Okay. Okay. So next time I do this project, I know that I can use Vite React TypeScript starter, and then we'll see what happens here. Please continue full implementation. So a really good tip for uh, Bolt guys is just repeatedly write, please continue full implementation. So we'll see what it's come up with. It doesn't look like anything's loading. That's fine. I love seeing how these are actually built. Okay, nice. Okay. <laughs> it's not quite a cave shooter yet, but at least we have a star button. That's pretty cool. One pixel. Please continue for yeah, we haven't actually got anything yet. <laughs> Hasn't got player character and movement, shooting mechanics, blah blah blah. Like these are the kind of thing like it's if imagine if you had had this in the nineties, right? You could be making games like there's no tomorrow. I really want to look more into this just because I love the idea of making a game personally. But I might have to pay for Unity, just so people know, uh Unity is ridiculously expensive. I don't know what it is with Unity, but Oh, Oh, you can get started for free. Uh, oh, this plan is available to customers with up to 200,000 revenue and funding. Oh. Oh, you can make... I didn't know this. This changes everything. I can make... You can do it for free. Up to 200,000. So you, if you don't have any funding and you don't have any revenue, you don't have to pay anything. And you can develop the... In oh, my God. This is sick. I didn't know that. Never mind, guys. It's uh, okay. Uh, it turns out that you can do it for free. Uh, up to 200,000. Okay. We're shooting, not really moving, but... Stay tuned for the Income Stream Surface game 2025. It's coming, guys. <laughs> Damn, dude, that's so cool, man. You can use Unity for for free from 2025 onwards. I don't know if it's quite available yet, but... So I'm just fixing some errors now, and then it's updating packages.json. Another cool thing about Bolt, I will say, I, I haven't really been a big fan of Bolt recently, but one really, really nice thing that it does is it seems to understand the shape of something a lot more easily than something like Cursor. Like, Cursor's almost building block by block, whereas Bolt is building the entire process, like, and it's actually thinking about the entire process instead of just building, you know, one part of that process. It seems to always keep in the back of its mind that it's building something, not just one thing at a time. Oh, there we go. Let's see what we've got. Okay. Okay. Not bad, dude. Not bad. Wow, that's actually pretty sick, dude. What if I go here? No. I can't believe that, man. What? Okay, wait, I just want to get monsters and loot, and then we'll stop. Oh my god, I love it. Please make... It's actually random cave generation. No way is it that easy. What? Now make monsters. Don't make them too hard. Make them, like, appear in parts of the cave at random. Make them sometimes guard something that drops upgrades. Uh, put a exit at the opposite side of... No, wait, well, this is fine. Um, and have some loot. Hey, you're going to bloody... Oh, what? Monster type dot boss return... Slime boss skeleton. How is it going to make that though? Simple AI move towards player. It's just made an AI. <laughs> what the fuck, dude? <laughs> nah, man. Add sparkle effect for rare items. Private read only. Weapon prefix. A sharp, mighty, fierce, ancient. Dude, Bolt is so interesting. Bolt is the best for for like MVP, like understand concepts and things like that. This is a really cool thing about cursor directory. I would have never thought about this. And now this has Unity here as well. You can make games, guys. And making money with games, I'm telling you right now, it's, it's a good way to make money. It's a very good way to make money. I believe Unity works on uh, iPhone and stuff as well. I Personally, I would make a mobile game. I don't think I would want to release on Steam or whatever, but I think I might be making a game, guys. I think I might be making a game very, very soon. This is very interesting. Yeah, fuck that. I'm not making that. I might just start with a really simple game and just release it and see if we can make money from it. Just something simple, yeah? To start off with. 
and then make something really complicated. Make what World of Warcraft should have been. All right. Oh, dude, look. Oh, my shooting's not working now. That's a monster, right? So if I go near this, it should. Yeah, yeah. Then he has to find a weapon. Yeah, right now I can't shoot, but. No way. Oh, that looks like a weapon. Oh, what? The monster's on the gray. Wait, does that attack me? Does it hurt me? No. Add damage from monsters. Uh, and also my shooting stopped working. Can we do shooting with space bar? Add health bar, there we go. What is this, JavaScript? Oh, that's crazy, dude. Well, it's TypeScript, obviously, but... This is space press, true break, private handle up. The really cool thing is, right, a lot of people like to write that I don't know how to code, but I, I can read code, and I can understand what it's saying, and I understand what it means. I mean, I guess that's just as, just as important these days. Oh, what is that? I've got a shield. Space isn't working either. Just want to see if I take damage real quick. Yeah, okay. I've got no, a health bar. Yeah. Oh, what happens if I die? I'm trying to... I won't say that because I'll get demonetized, but I'm trying to do that. Yeah, no, it didn't, didn't, didn't unalive me. Oh. Anyway, I think we're going to leave the video there, guys. I just wanted to quick... Oh, is that Lou? That's a boss. <laughs> I just wanted to quickly talk about this because the main thing isn't actually the prompts. The main thing is, like, you can learn about what these things can do, right? And you can learn new tech stacks by doing. You can learn by doing. This wasn't a thing before because you'd have to learn the tech stack in order to do the tech stack. But now you can just look at the tech stack put that tech stack inside something like Bolt, create something, and learn through doing. And there's nothing more powerful, I'll tell you right now, than learning through doing. If you're trying to learn a language, just like you, know, you could call these languages, they are languages, the best way to learn a language is go to the country where they speak that language and speak that language with the people of that country. There's nothing that, that you can't replace that with books. You can't replace that by reading. It's just, it's not possible. Trust me, I've learned three languages in my life, okay? I've learned Dutch, Spanish, and Italian. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you're watching all the way to the end of this video, things are hype right now, to be honest with you, and also, you're an absolute legend. I'll see you very, very soon with some more content. Peace out. Watch this video if you want to make your own content generator using Bolt.